I had this epiphany yesterday, and I mean, it's like a real epiphany, and it happens in 45 minutes. Let's explain. Here's how I put on my shoes. Here's how I bring in packages. And here's how I eat my grass-fed beef minis. Here's how I brush my teeth. And here's how I eat my Kit Kat. I'm just kidding. No one should eat it that way. Chocolate frosted donut flavor. It's quite nice. So I made this note last night. I'm gonna read it. It revolves around truly being yourself. So I'm about to have a call with a lady from a company that I've been trying to get in touch with for a month or so now. She hasn't replied to a few emails, rescheduled meetings, nothing too big of a deal. But my personality, when I go on that call, I, now I run through so many scenarios in my head and I have this scenario that we jump on the call and just politely she says, not that it's a big deal, sorry I missed a few of your emails and a few of your calls. In which case, I, just because I think this is funny, no, it's fine, I'm, sh I'm sure you mean that. Maybe I'd think of something funnier. <laughs> but give it a second or two to marinate and then be like, I'm just kidding, absolutely not. Uh, no worries at all, I know you're, you're busy. And then we move on. And I thought about this because it reminded me of this. I don't know how I've ever seen this. And I really thought about this because my first thought on it was, only recently was, wow, he's going into that interview, which I imagine is performing a song to train, whatever. And he's delivering it. He's giving everything. He's doing it his way. He's being truly him. And then I thought about everyone else in the room and I thought, this isn't the normal way you do these kind of things. And I thought, why isn't it the normal way we do these kind of things? I think the normal person the, the av I think there's this level of acceptability that, yeah. I think we have to do it on a scale. So and let's just do time along here. So in my opinion, we all start here. So this is the normal person. You all start to this certain level of normalcy and then you kind of stay around that as long as you live. Now the interesting part about this is that this period here is up till about 18, maybe 22 years of age, where all you want to do is be the same as everyone around you. And then this is where you really hit this problem. And this is where I hit the problem or what I think is a problem. At this point in your life, the way others perceive you really matters to the point that you either have a job or you don't. Because if you end up being up here or down here, you stand out like a sore thumb. And in the corporate world, being anything other than this makes you stand out for all the wrong reasons because everyone else is like this. Right, Oliver, next part. Let's do this fancy shot again. So I spent all my life going this path and then going along here until, let's say at this point, where I was making content and I'm starting to realize who I actually am, the person I want to be. I'm not just talking about the person who wants to be a good person, they want to give, they want to help other people. I'm talking about the way you want to go about daily life. So at this point, oh, it's a bloody slow process, but let's just, for argument's sake, here. And now my fluctuations are like this. As I start to learn more about myself, I'm becoming less normal. I'm straying further from this line. Now this is fine when you're doing things on your own, but when you're working with someone else who's like this, this just seems so far from it. So I wanna run this scenario by you. By you, it's kind of like me just talking out loud. <laughs> I try and put myself back in the shoes of someone who was working a nine to five job, something that initially I thought I loved, but realized I didn't love. And I also realized that it's, it's a job to pay my bills. If I'm not in love with that, I feel very differently about someone coming in with a hugely high energy level, doing something that's very different with a huge level of passion that is just unmatched. It's like, let me explain, it's like, like this. Be pleased with this idea that I've just come up with. <laughs> I was going to do 
a big old fish tank of water, slosh it around and then have like a, a boat floating in there and how that doesn't work. But this, I think this is better. So we have our water. This is the normal person. Or this is me. It doesn't really matter yet. But if you add oil, Wipe this off, okie dokie. You have two things that happen. So the two things that are happening, the first one is that the normal person is now separated from the person with this super high energy, this passion. They just don't mix. The other thing that I thought was really cool is the fact that now one of them is on top of the other. Someone is inferior to the other who is superior. Now, that doesn't mean that someone's inferior and superior, but it can come across like that. What am I trying to say? When you're overbearing, it can feel like you're trying to be superior or you're trying to make this other people person feel inferior. That's been a big learning for me, actually. So I had this English teacher when I was at boarding school and I loved it at the time. I thought it was amazing and I'm so glad he did it. Once a week, he would give us one word and he would say, write down 10 synonyms and uh, remember what they mean. Now we did this for quite some time, but then a few years ago, like five, six years ago, maybe longer than that, I started doing it myself. In fact, I built automations that would automatically send me a word and 10 synonyms for me to go and figure out and remember. Not sure where it is. <laughs> but then I came to this realization that actually having a huge vocabulary, while it may be a good thing when you're, when you're communicating with someone who also has a big vocabulary, what's the real benefit of it? Because if you're using your wide, big vocabulary in front of someone who doesn't know those words, you're making them feel stupid. I'm guilty of this too. I thought I was sounding smart. I, I forgot the flip side of it, that that other person now feels stupid for not knowing what that word means. That twist thing was completely unnecessary. I just, it felt like it fit. <laughs> so then how do you be your true self without making someone feel inferior or feel stupid or just feel like you're a complete weirdo? <laughs> Let me have this cool, we'll get back to it. I forgot what I was talking about, so I had to go back and watch the end of the last clip. I don't really have much more to add other than it was a good job I didn't go into that cool being this, you know, being that true self, which, what am I saying? Going into that call being my true self, like, so doing it as I think would be funny in my head, not like to make the other person laugh, but just that I think would be funny, which was to, oh, I've forgotten the bloody thing, which was to make a joke of the few emails and calls that have been missed. It's a good job I didn't because the personality, I don't feel like it was there. And so when I, when I had this epiphany the other night, I was like, oh gosh, I should really just be being myself no matter what anyone else thinks. But I don't, I don't think that's the case. I think it's a time and a place to be different versions of yourself. I see everything. We can go, maybe this is a good video idea for tomorrow. I see everything as a scale, zero to a hundred. And that scale can fluctuate. You can fluctuate on that scale. Let's, let's use that tomorrow. That's an interesting topic. Uh, it's been 24 hours. So let's give these a go. I do that. We've got our normal solution. Worked better than yesterday, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, got a nice thick layer of cornstarch at the bottom of the, was this the biggest bubble solution? Giant bubble solution. Your toothbrush in there. All right, we've got the timer to switch to the other side of the teeth. So we're gonna finish there. Okay, watch out, Judah. That might work a bit better. Dude, do all of these just work way better after 24 hours? I'm actually brushing off the bottom. I'm definitely more for store-bought than bothering with this faff. You have to stir it every time you want to use it. Giant bubble solution. This is meant to be bouncing bubble solution. In which case I think I need my sock. Dude, are you in the way, dude? What are you doing? You come over to the side. If you want your odd daisy socks, they're on my store. <laughs> okay, dude, are you ready? It does bounce. That's quite cool, isn't it? The one we've all been waiting for. So now this has been 24 hours, this is meant to be absolute beast. Are you ready, Judah? 
I don't know if you're ready. Not off to a brilliant start. See, that was quite good. Do the old tennis racket, Duda, okay? So we just soak this in. Oh, my sock. All right, you ready, Duda? Whoa! That seems like such a fake reaction, doesn't it? I was impressed with that. <laughs> Duda, are you ready? Look at those bubbles, they're so heavy. This might actually be the best solution. I like this a lot. I don't know, do I? <laughs> it's like my life, my wife likes the idea of a, being a trad wife where you make all your own butter, you farm your own animals. And I'm like, you might like that, but that takes you back to the times when life was so much more difficult. Like now you have the luxury of just going to a store and buying it. All right, are you all done, Duda? I'm done. All right, see you guys tomorrow.